Hey guys, this is Will of Third and Long. Today we are going to be breaking down the new AP Poll Top 25 that came out Sunday afternoon, seeing where every team falls, who went up, who went down, and if they deserve to be where they are. So hit that like button and subscribe, and let's get started. So coming in at number one, we still have the Georgia Bulldogs. The main thing that changed was they only got 35 of the first place votes right now. Now, Georgia did not play a very good game versus Auburn. They have not played really any good games so far this year. Coming out of the gate very slow every single week. They are winning, but the argument can be made that they're not earning the number one spot and they're only number one based off of what they did the last two years. Now, we're almost at the halfway point this year and they still haven't fixed their problems. They still start out every game slow and they still have no running game. So will this finally be the week that Georgia starts to fall out of that number one spot and maybe get supplanted by a Michigan or a Texas. I don't know, but the case can be made. I'm fine with them being number one for one more week, but I really think it's time for them to start sliding down right now. Coming in at number two, we have the Michigan Wolverines. So Michigan finally played a complete game this past weekend. They won very convincingly versus Nebraska. It was like 45 to 7, so they looked good on offense. They finally got over 35 points, and they continue to look the same on defense, completely shutting teams out. So a lot of people are starting to say, should Michigan be number one right now? Not based off of one week of finally living up to expectations. Prior to that, they were in the same boat as Georgia, starting out slow, not playing a complete game. So I'm not going to swap them based off of just one week. Now, if that continues to happen this week, Georgia starts slow, Michigan plays the full game, then they should be swapped. But as of right now, I'm fine with both of these teams staying one and two. Show me what happens this week. Coming in at number three. Texas Longhorns. If there is a team who deserves to be number one to me, it is the Texas Longhorns. They have the best win this year. They beat Alabama, well, they beat the crap out of Bama at Tuscaloosa, completely controlled the game, beat Milrow, won offense, defense, special teams, really good game. And this weekend, they play Oklahoma, a top 15 matchup, really good game. If they beat Oklahoma, which they will be favored to, if they do, to me, they should be number one. I would have no problem with them being number one right now because they are at least playing better than Michigan and Georgia so far, and they have a good win. Michigan, Georgia, they don't have any good wins as of yet. Georgia won't have any this year because they don't play anyone, but at least Michigan has the opportunity later. But this is week six. What have you done as of right now, Texas to me should be number one or in the conversation. If they win this weekend, they better move up. Coming in at number four, we have the Ohio State Buckeyes. So they were off this past weekend. They had a bye week there. Um, so really, no one's going to be moving up for these first couple spots. So they did stay where they were last weekend. But this weekend, they kind of have a challenge. So they have five and O Maryland Terrapins coming in to play the Buckeyes at home. So the Buckeyes will have a good chance here to get a good quality win versus a quality in-conference team. But Maryland's not some great team, but they're a good team and they're always competitive and they usually can always score. Now, I'm not sold on the Buckeyes being four at all. I think Florida State should have played four, four even though they haven't played well the last couple of, of weeks. They do have, I mean, I just think that they're, if they played the Buckeyes, they would beat the Buckeyes. That's just what I think as of right now, unless the Buckeyes continue to get better, but I'm fine with them being four because they do have a top 10 win and that cannot be overstated. But if they win this weekend, you know, could they move up? Possibly. Coming in at number five, we have, as we said, Florida State. Florida State, too, was on a bye week. A lot of teams were, were on bye weeks, week five. Uh, that's kind of early, but a lot of teams were definitely on bye weeks last weekend. But they didn't move up. They didn't move down. I'm fine with them being five right now because they had a questionable game versus Boston College. Did not play the best versus Clemson, although they did win, and that is a good quality win. But they will be playing Virginia Tech this weekend. And to me, they've had time to rest. Uh, Jordan Travis should be back fully healthy. They should beat the crap out of Virginia Tech. 
And then kind of depending on how well the Buckeyes play this weekend, we will see if they flip-flop them. But as of right now, I'm fine with everyone so far, one through five. Coming in at six, we have Penn State. Penn State had a decent win last week versus Northwestern, but they didn't control the game until the second half. So not a good win. Uh, But nonetheless, they are off this week. They have the bye week. So no one as of yet has moved. So it's the same as in week five. So far, no problems. Um, But coming in at number seven now, we have Washington. So Washington, just like Penn State, has a bye week this week. So they won't be doing anything just like Penn State to move up or move down. So nothing should be changing there. They are where they were last week. Washington finally did not score 50 points this past weekend. Penix finally did not have 450 yards. So the guy is human, but nonetheless, to me, they have been the most consistent team so far this year. So I'm definitely fine with them having stayed at number seven. Now, coming in at number eight, we have the Oregon Ducks. So Oregon beat the brakes off of Stanford. Really good back-to-back games. They beat Colorado 42-6. to They beat Stanford 42-6. to So they did move up one spot, and they jumped the Trojans and took the number eight spot, as they should have. They are playing way better than the Trojans on both sides of the ball so far this year, and they have better wins than the Trojans have. So they are off this week. They have another bye week. So three top 10 bye weeks so far. Kind of odd, but that's just the way that things lined up. And on the 14th, it's Oregon, Washington. So these teams, no matter what happens this week, they will be staying side by side. So that's setting up for a really good matchup next week, but I'm perfectly fine with them being at eight. They did deserve to move up. I've been saying since the year started, this is a top 10 team. Bo Nix is a Heisman contender, just like Penix. So that game should be really fun. Coming in at number nine, falling one spot, USC Trojans. So back-to-back polls, Trojans are dropping. They should be happy they only fell one spot. Now, their first half was so good, and Caleb Williams looked so good the first half. Defense was playing well, fast, getting the ball. Had they finished the second half like that, to me, they'd have jumped up two spots. But their second half performance was so god-awful and so pathetic that coming into this year, the question was, will the defense be better because they can't possibly be any worse? How wrong we were. This defense seems completely worse than last year. They haven't even played a ranked team yet, and they're getting gashed for 40 points. Just wait till they have to play Oregon, Washington. There's a lot of question marks going on. Caleb Williams cannot throw for 700 yards to save this defense. So they should be happy they only fell one spot. To me, it's time to dump them right out the top 10. I've been pro Lincoln Riley, but he should have fired Alec Grinch. And it's costing his team right now. He made the wrong call and conference play hasn't even really gotten going yet. But they have Arizona this week. They'll probably win there, you know, but they'll probably give up 30 points. They'll win like 50 to 30. So I don't foresee them moving up. Coming in at number 10, we have Notre Dame. They will be playing Louisville this weekend. So they have another top 25. They have a pretty tough stretch right here. They had the Buckeyes, they had ranked Duke, and now they have ranked Louisville. So Notre Dame is definitely getting tested, really heartbreaking loss versus the Buckeyes, but they did rebound, get a good win on the road versus Duke. But the Notre Dame offense is starting to sputter. Can it rebound? Hopefully they learn from some of the things that happened at Duke. But nonetheless, they got a pretty tough win and they did move up one spot which is perfectly fine. Uh, so they definitely deserve to move up one spot. They, they, they had a top 25 win on the road versus a pretty decent team. So I'm perfectly fine with them coming in to the top 10. And at number 11, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. So, you know, are they starting to get things going? They had a pretty decent win this past weekend versus Mississippi State. To me, they did deserve to move up one spot. So they did click in from 12 to number 11 right now. Maybe things are starting to get going. If they keep winning like this, they'll start slowly creeping back into the top 10 until they get tested next. But nonetheless, they they did deserve to move up. Very good quality win versus a conference foe. And uh, this weekend, they have the Aggies. So that should be a really good game. If they win that, that'll probably catapult them back into the top 10. 
Coming in at number 12, we have the Oklahoma Sooners moving up two spots. They've been creeping up the whole year. Where'd they start the year at? At like 21, 22. They've been creeping up. Their defense is playing really good. Offense is playing really good. Their biggest question mark is they cannot run the ball. You need a running back number one. They have Texas this weekend. That is a really good game. Number, what, three versus number 12. Everyone is is going to watch that game. If they win, they'll be in the top 10, definitely. If Texas wins, like I said, they are making that case to number one because that would be two top 12 wins. Next, coming in at 13, we have Washington State. So their best win was versus Oregon State, which is a pretty good win. They are 4-0. and They moved up three spots. Do I really think they should have moved up three spots? No, but I guess some of the teams slid back that were in, in front of them. I think Washington State's like a number 17 or 18 team. So I, I think they're definitely way too high. They're not the number 13 team in the country. This weekend, they're going to have to play the Bruins, so they'll definitely get tested there. Uh, but nonetheless, props to them because they have no conference next year. So root for them just because these guys have no home, so they're purely playing for themselves right now. Coming in at number 14, we have the North Carolina Tar Heels, who will be playing Syracuse this weekend. They also had a bye week last weekend, and they're 4-0. and They moved up one spot. Are the Tar Heels the number 14 team? No. They're only 14 by default, just like Utah was only 10 by default. They definitely didn't earn the right. It's just everyone in, in front of them lost, so they kept sliding up. They're at 14 right now. I in no way think they deserve to be 14. They're a 20 to 25 team. I don't think they've been playing well. Their, their defense has been playing better, but Drake May hasn't in Philip Lindsay's offense. I think he misses Phil Longo, and they're basically a run first team now, but yet they have a top five pick at quarterback. But nonetheless, they haven't really been challenged to me. And I do not think they are 14. So to me, they are too high. But yet, they're still a good team. But they should be about 20. Coming in at 15, we have Oregon State, who just beat Utah because Utah cannot move the ball at all. How good of a win is that? I don't think it's a good win because I thought Utah was not very good. They're very good on defense, and they're very well coached. But without Cam Rising, they are a shell of a offense. So the Beavers... Congrats, they are at 15. I'm fine with them being 15. I think they're more of a 17, 18-ish team, but nonetheless, they got a really good win versus what was a top 10 team at the time that they beat them. Next, coming in at 16, we have Old Miss, who just beat LSU in a thriller. Uh, LSU, I have not been sold on. I've said since the year started, completely overrated. They're an 8-9 to nine win team. That is panning out so far, but nonetheless, Old Miss had 700-something yards on Brian Kelly's team. They definitely, to me, deserve to have jumped up four spots and be number 16. Do I think they're going to finish the year there? I don't know, but I think that's where they belong so far. So they so they played Bama close first half, second half, not so much, but they, that did not deter them. They did not fall off from a really tough loss. They came out and put 50-something points on the Tigers. So they definitely deserve to be where they are in my opinion. Coming in at number 17, we have Miami, who had a bye week this week. So they moved up one week, just, I mean, one spot just by default, uh, which is perfectly fine to me. To me, they are a number 15-ish team, so I think they should be higher. They've been one of the more impressive teams so far at, at this point of the year on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. They rank in the top 15 on both offense and defense, the only team in the country right now. So props to them for that. Uh, Even though they had a bye week, to me, they should be number 15. They should be in front of the Tar Heels because if they were playing the Saturday, I would be putting my money on the Hurricanes. But Miami will have Georgia Tech, so that should be a win for them. Coming in at number 18, we have Utah, uh, who fell eight spots with their loss to Oregon State. With Utah, I've been saying they were a 21 to 25 team. Should have never been top 10. That was a that was just setting them up for failure. Now, they have a bye week this week, which they need it bad because their offense is horrible. So they definitely need to do some planning there. Maybe with the bye week, Cam Rising will be back next weekend. 
Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath because every week it's the same story. Cam Rising, I might play this Saturday. You know, I won't believe it till I see him actually suit up. At at this point, they keep dangling that out there. I don't even care. You know, it's just, this is the sixth week. We don't really give a crap no more. If he plays, this is a completely different team. But till he suits up and steps onto the field, this is a 20 to 25 team. Uh, but they do have the bye week. So hopefully he will be healthy next weekend. But I'm fine with them being at number 18 because it's closer to what I think they really are, which is 21 to 25. Next, at number 19, we have the Duke Blue Devils who fell two spots, losing to Notre Dame in a really close game at the very end of the game. But they are 4-1 and one right now. They do have a bye week this week. A lot of bye weeks, geez. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm fine with them falling two spots. They've played very, very well this year. Um... To me, they're you know they're they're a nineteen to two to twenty five team. So I thought they were too high last week, but they did lose. Uh, so drop them two spots down to nineteen. That is that is perfectly fine because this is still a very good competitive team. Okay, so coming in at twenty, this is where things you know once we start getting here to the end, this is where things kind of become a, a joke somewhat. So Kentucky's at twenty. They are five and zero. Oh, slow down. Uh, they start this way every single year, and then they lose five straight games. It's the same thing over and over. Uh, but nonetheless, props to them for being 5-0, and but they beat the brakes off of Florida. But I've been saying the whole year, Florida is a garbage team. They're not good at offense. They're not good at defense. They're not good at special teams. They're not good at anything. They're not even good at coaching. So Napier might very well get fired this year. If he doesn't, then he probably deserves to be. But nonetheless, Kentucky beating them is not impressive to me because Florida should have never been ranked in the first place. Last week, they beat Charlotte 22-6 to at home. So that's not a good win, but I'm fine with them getting into the top 25, but they're not going to stay there. Their first loss, they're going to get thrown right out and they're never going to come back in. And they have Georgia this week. So we'll see what happens. You know, may, maybe they'll beat Georgia. Maybe, but probably not. And at number 21, we have the Missouri Tigers. So Missouri moved up two spots and with Kentucky was unranked last week. So they are coming into the poll. But for the Tigers here, they moved up two spots. I don't think Missouri's very good. I don't have a problem with them being ranked as of this point because they beat Kansas State and whatnot. But I don't think they're a very good team. I definitely don't think that, that, that they're going to finish the year ranked. I'm fine with them being 21 right now. Now, they do play LSU this weekend, so one of them will be getting thrown out of the top 25. Coming in next, we have the Tennessee Volunteers coming in at 22. So they have a bye week this week also. But they beat the Gamecocks last week like 41-20. to 20. And they fell one spot, which I'm fine with that because the Volunteers have a lot of questions. So even though they won by 21 points, Joe Milton still does not look good. This is an offensively focused team, and you can't keep playing like that. But they are playing well. They definitely deserve to be ranked. But that loss to Florida was a really bad loss. But nonetheless, I was fine with them falling one spot. Because the offense is not looking like a normal Josh Heupel offense so far. Uh, but they definitely deserve to be in that 20 to 25 range as of right now. Coming in at 23, we have LSU, which we already touched on. I think they're an 8 to 9 win team. Completely overrated. That Florida State win keeps looking worse and worse every week. They got gashed by Old Miss. They fell 10 spots. I completely agree with that. I never thought this team was that good in the first place. And they rely on Daniels to do way too much. He had like 520 yards of offense this past week, throwing and running. That's ridiculous. They cannot get a stop to save their life on defense. And they and they have a pretty good defensive line. But nonetheless, they fell 10 spots. They should be ranked because will they be ranked after this week? I don't know. Uh, but they definitely deserve to have slid all the way down to the back because they're playing like crap. Next at 24, we have Fresno State. They moved up one spot. Why? I mean, like they barely beat Nevada, who's one of the worst teams in the country. It was like 27 to 9. Like you can't put 30 points on that team. I mean, it's it's fine that they won, but they didn't do anything to move up one spot to me. So 
the team that's 25 to me has a better reason to be 24 than than Fresno State. But fine, move them up one spot. It's not a big deal. And coming in last but not least, we have the Louisville Cardinals. Welcome to the top 25 coming into the 25th position. They are 5-0. and oh. They have Notre Dame this weekend. So like we said, a really tough schedule for Notre Dame. That's a really good game, though. That's back-to-back-to-back to back to back top 25 games for Notre Dame. The first really good game for Louisville. So we'll really get to see just how much better they are this year. Uh, but to me, they should have been ranked two weeks ago. So I'm definitely happy that they got into the top 25 right now. I just feel bad for them because they should have been in the top 25. So that's my breakdown of the Week 6 AP Poll Top 25. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.